Hi, I'm Jennifer Vaughn, Chief Operating Officer for the Planetary Society. And I'm joined by our Chief Scientist, Dr. Bruce Betts. Hello, everyone. We're here to look back at how you, our members and supporters, have helped shape Mars exploration over decades. First, let me set the scene. 1980, when we were founded, we had just come off the successes of the Viking orbiters and landers at Mars, but looking forward, there were no U.S. missions planned for future Mars exploration. So at that time, the Planetary Society was born to prove public support for planetary exploration, and Mars was a goal. So we went out, we set out, and got to work right away on raising the profile of Mars exploration and advocating for future missions. So the Planetary Society plays a very special role. We are independent, we are nonprofit, we are non-governmental, which allows us to do some things that maybe government organizations can't do. So at a time where there were strained international relationships, the Planetary Society as an independent nonprofit was able to send scientists to conferences, even if they were within the, the Soviet Union. We were able to participate ourselves. We were able to build relationships and increase communication with international partners and really brought an international Mars community together. Little by little, we did more and more of our own conferences. We advocated uh, in Congress, we testified, all with the goal of more exploration of Mars in the near future, and ideally, working together internationally. And it was these relationships that led the organization in a new direction. While we had been funding space projects ever since we were founded, we were now given the opportunity to work with the French and the Soviet space agencies on a real space mission, a potential Mars balloon that would fly to Mars. So while that particular project, the Mars balloon, never flew, the results from working with that group of people and the relationships and experience that we built up as the Planetary Society rippled in many positive ways into the future. For instance, Mars rovers. At the time, the Soviets were working on Mars rover prototypes, and the Planetary Society became very enthusiastic about this new way of exploring Mars. So we, along with our member support, were able to bring people together to test the Mars rovers in different terrains in different places around the world. We even paraded them in Washington, D.C. to show off their capabilities, really raising the awareness of rovers. So, when Sojourner landed in 1997 and was able to traverse, you as a Planetary Society member contributed to that. And when Perseverance lands later this week, you're going to be part of that as well. We're very proud of these efforts. And these opportunities inspired us to continue along the path of pursuing projects with the possibility of flying to other worlds. Many of these projects were managed by our own Bruce Betts, so I'm going to hand it over to you now, Bruce. Thanks, Jen. Everyone get ready for a whirlwind tour of TPS and Mars spacecraft exploration in the last 25 years. Here we go. Microphones. We've been trying to hear Mars since the mid-90s when Carl Sagan advocated flying microphones to Mars. And thanks to our members, we flew a microphone to Mars on Mars Polar Lander, which crashed. We were selected to fly microphones on the French Netlander mission, which was canceled. We were partnered with a group that included a microphone on the Phoenix spacecraft, which due to software issues, it was never turned on. But wait, thanks in part to our pushing to get it on every mission, there are now two microphones on Perseverance, one for entry, descent, and landing, one with the SuperCam instrument. We are looking forward to hearing those first sounds from Mars. On to flying names to other worlds. The Planetary Society basically pioneered the concept of flying people's names to other worlds. And it started largely with Mars 96, a Russian mission that failed and ended up in the ocean. But the spare MAPEX passive radiation detector instrument that included all our member names was included on Mars Pathfinder. We also then collected names for some other missions, including the Phoenix mission, where we flew a mini DVD made of silica glass, which is currently on Mars on the Phoenix spacecraft, not only names, but visions of Mars, a library of Mars science fiction, art, radio shows, greetings to future explorers. On the Mars Exploration Rover landers, the ones that took Spirit and Opportunity rovers to the surface, 
There are many DVDs with 4 million names on them, and also it was a partnership with the LEGO Group, and so we've got LEGO Bricks and LEGO Minifigures, Biff Starling and Sandy Moondust who told their stories, secret codes, other educational goodies that are included with those names that are on the surface of Mars. Red Rover Goes to Mars was the broader project that this was a part of, and we also included student astronauts, which were 16 students from 12 countries around the world who actually participated in mission operations at JPL early in the Spirit and Opportunity missions and then reported out their stories. The Planetary Society has also been instrumental in various naming activities, including some Mars missions. So Sojourner Truth, the first rover ever on Mars, was named through a Planetary Society naming contest, as were Spirit, an opportunity named through a Planetary Society contest with NASA and LEGO. But our work doesn't stop there. Back to you, Jen. And throughout it all, we never stopped our awareness building and advocacy for Mars exploration. Today, we're focused on Mars sample return. Perseverance is the first step, but a lot more has to happen to get those samples back and analyzed here on Earth. So we're also telling the story about Mars and sharing the passion, beauty, and joy, as Bill and I likes to say, of Mars exploration. So you can always find out more about what's going on on our website, planetary.org, on our social media channels, on our planetary radio show, and of course, our magazine, The Planetary Report. And of course, one more thing that we all do to help raise awareness is this. We get together, we celebrate the milestones in space exploration. These are too important to let go by without taking a moment to really understand and think about what's happening. So thank you for being here with us at Planet Fest 21, and thank you for all you've done to support Mars exploration over the last four decades. Enjoy. <laughs>